Today, I want to read to you from one of the great prophets of the Old Testament and about some pretty heavy things that he prophesied about. I want to talk to you today about the dark day of the Lord. Amos chapter 5, beginning at verse 18, says, Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord! For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or though he went into his house, leaned his hand upon the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? Amos was not a professional prophet. God compelled this simple farmer to speak to Israel for at least two reasons. First, the professional prophets weren't listening to the Lord. Second, the people did not listen to the professional prophets. So God called an untrained man to do a great work at a critical time, a time when Israel stood in the shadow of coming judgment. It would be a severe judgment. In the few verses before our text, Amos said that the calamity would reach so far that they shall call the farmer to mourning and the skillful lamenters to wailing. This referred to the ancient Jewish practice of hiring professional mourners to wail at a funeral. Amos described judgment so widespread that there would be a shortage of skillful lamenters so that they had to hire a farmer to do the mourning. Just as God used a farmer as a prophet, so a judgment would come that would transform farmers into professional mourners. In this warning from Amos 5, he comforted the people of Israel, For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. Now, the day of the Lord is a familiar theme throughout the Bible. The term, the day of the Lord, it's used more than 25 times in the Bible. It does not necessarily refer to one specific day. It speaks of God's time or God's season. The idea is that now is the day of man, but the day of man will not last forever. One day the Messiah will end the day of man and will bring forth the day of the Lord. In their religious ritualism, the people of Israel still claimed that they longed for the day of the Lord. It would be like a person today who said that they wanted Jesus to come back really soon, but they lived in a way that wasn't ready for Jesus at all. Now, such people don't really know what they're asking for, and they don't realize that the day of the Lord will not be easy and nice for everyone. The return of Jesus is a blessing for those who are ready, but it's a curse for those who are not. Look at what Amos said to Israel in his day. He rightly warned them that they didn't know what they asked for because the day of the Lord would bring them judgment, not mercy. They would end up worse off than before. It would be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Think of a man running from a lion and being relieved that he escaped, only to find out that a worse threat waited for him, namely that a bear met him. Or imagine that a man takes a rest by leaning against the wall in his own home, and instead of finding rest, he finds a snake bite. Or imagine that when the night is done and it's time for the sun to rise, it just gets darker. And all one can say is, is it not very dark with no brightness in it? Now, don't be confused. Amos is not saying that the day of the Lord will be darkness. Rather, it will seem like darkness to those who are not ready. The bottom line is this. When we're right with God, we will want the day of the Lord. We long for him to show his strength because we know that we abide in him. When we're not right with God... We should dread the day of the Lord, because when God shows himself strong, his strength may work against us and not for us. In Joel's day, Judah was not right with God. So the day of the Lord would be darkness and not a light to them. And that's what Amos spoke about here. At this 
time of year, we think about all the wonderful things that we do. We think about the great presence of Jesus among ourselves, and it's wonderful that we do. But we should also think about the second coming of Jesus. Many Christians have a warm anticipation of the return of Jesus, and they look forward to a time when the day of man is over and the day of the Lord shines in full strength. Through the centuries, the prophet Amos speaks to us today. Do you have good reason to welcome the day of the Lord? Will it be as darkness or light to you? You can, in Jesus' name, get yourself ready to be with God today. And that's something that God can work in your life to make you ready for the return of Jesus today.